Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here, and I'm doing a new video on one of my favorite, like a favorite collection series. And people have asked me to do this for a long time. It's on my favorite slasher films. So I went through and pulled out some of my favorites, and um, you know some of them I have in there. You know I like, but of course there are certain ones you have got to have in here. But I'm going to go through them. I'll say a little bit about some of them. Some of them I haven't watched in so long that I don't even know how well I can explain them. But the first one I pulled out is um, April Fool's Day. Now this one. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to put it in here because of, like, a twist. I'm not ruining the twist. But, um, this is basically about a group of these friends that are getting together for this party. And, um, you know, they all start dying off one by one. It has a really cool music in this movie, too. But it has a really good twist. Uh, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not ruining it. They also made a remake of this, which I've, I've never really watched. I think I own it, but I never watched it. Never really wanted to watch it. I think it was, like, going to be, like, a theater movie, and then, like, they didn't even bother with it. Um, this one, this is a pretty cool one called American Gothic with Yvonne De Carla from um, The Munsters and um, you know, Rod Steger. And um, basically the movie is, it's about, a, I think it was, I'm trying to remember exactly what happens in it. I think people end up stumbling across this house and it's these two, this really weird couple and their weird kids. I think it's their weird daughter who's like like in her 50s, but she acts like she's 10. It's really peculiar. It's, it's really weird to explain. I don't know if this one's considered exactly slasher, but it's called Anatomy. And this one I really liked. It was about, um, it was a German film. It was about these um, medical students that are basically, people are getting killed off and using those, you know, that plastinization process, you know, like you see it, like the science centers and things like that. It was pretty cool. Basically, like people are being turned, you know, killed, and that's what's being done to them. Um, now, this one isn't even out in America. For some reason, it's never come out. It's an Amber Heard film called "All the Boys Love Mandy Lane." I don't. I I always like this one. It's really weird that it's never had an official release. And it's basically another one about people getting together. I think they were getting together on this farm, and they started dying off. It's like, you know, a lot of these are the same kind of things. Kind of difficult to explain. Another one with a good twist, um, Alice Sweet Alice. And this was one of Brooke Shields' first movies. And it's a, um, Brooke Shields, I'm trying to remember exactly what happens in this. Like I said, I haven't watched these in so long. And when you watch, like, every horror movie that comes out, they all blend. But this one, it was a, um, I remember, like, this girl, like, the... Brooke Shields was killed. They were trying to figure out who it was. And the whole time you see this really weird, freaky character in this outfit sort of wandering around at the crime scenes and all. It, it was creepy. Um, another good one, Alone in the Dark with Martin Landau, Jack Palance, and Donald Pleasance. This is a pretty cool one. And these are a bunch of escape mental patients that are go off and kill people. I just met Martin Landau at the Hollywood show. Was, he was a really nice guy. Um, Black Christmas, the original one, about a group of these girls at a um, sorority house getting, you know, all these dirty phone calls from this guy, getting killed off one by one. You know, slash movies, people get killed off one by one. This was a good one. The remake, I, I think I like it a little bit more than I thought I did. I, I, I don't think I own the remake. I gotta get that at some point. Um, Bloody Birthday was a good one about, I think there's a new DV of this out too, but about a group of these little, like, kids that are killers. And I, th I don't remember what happens to him, but they all start killing everybody off. Um, Brutal Massacre was kind of a comedy spoof um, slasher film about making a movie, and Ken Frey's in it. I thought I like this one. This one I like. Some people talk about this compared to Friday the Thirteenth. I don't know. I sometimes I like this a little bit more. It's called The Burning, and it's the the movie starts with these kids that end up setting fire to this. And I think he had, like, mental problems and stuff. He worked for the camp. And they would taunt this guy. They ended up lighting him on fire, and he died. And came and he comes back and starts, you know, taunting and killing off the kids of the camp, you know, in, you know years later. Because I think he just got out of, like, the burn word or something like that. Of course, you got to have Child's Play. I'm definitely interested in seeing the remake and what they do with it. A lot of people didn't like the later ones, like Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky. I like them. I like John Waters and Seed of Chucky. Um, Christmas Evil, a really good Christmas horror movie. As good as Silent Night, Deadly Night. I thought, and there's a, the one from who plays the wife in, um, you know, Tool Time, uh, Home Improvement is in this. 
in a real small part, but I always think of that. Um, Cannibal Campout is one of the really good shot on video um, John McBride slasher films. A bunch of these kids going out camping, and there's these three freaky guys that live out in the woods that start killing them off. It's, I don't know, I like this, and a lot of horror directors have seen this one. Like, if you watch a lot of horror movies, have similar elements to that. Um, Candyman, of course. I, I didn't care too much for the sequels. I remember when my old dog, Max, when I played, like, the third movie it was playing, I remember he had, like, from the movie, like a, like a paranoia to bees, because of the bees buzzing sound the whole movie. Um, this is a good indie one, and I just got the uncut version called Carver. I like this one. It was like a bunch of these people um, out camping. Some of these are the same kind of plots, but they end up like finding, I think they find this old footage, and like they're getting killed all, like I said, it's, there's so much of the same, that's why I didn't do this in the past. Be like repetitive, like they did this and they did this. Um, cheerleader camp, um, can't remember everything about that. Um, of course, Friday the 13th. You know, I like, I really like all of them. Like I said, I like the burning a little bit more than the first one. But all the sequels really had their moments. You know, some were better than others. I like the one Takes Manhattan a lot. I thought they were all pretty good. Dr. Giggles, that was a pretty good one about a um, doctor um, that's killing people. Of course, this one I think they're remaking now. I always really like this one called The Fun House about a group of these kids that end up like saying, oh, we should spend the night in the fun house. So they end up, you know, spending the night in there and they end up witnessing the guy who wears the, um, the sort of, he wears this mask. He ends up basically sleeping with the fortune teller. Basically, they're peeking down through the floor and see him kill the fortune teller and um, then they're basically screwed. Um, faceless. This is a pretty crazy one about plastic surgery. Um, I don't know. It's really weird, but it has cool, strange music. Definitely watch that one. Happy birthday to me. Another one about a group of people getting together, getting killed off. This one was good. It has music from the person who did the music for Motel Hell. And I really like his the music he does. Now, watch out. You don't buy this version. Of course, I kept it. But this is the... Um, version with all the changed music. So when you buy it, make sure you get this version. Um, House of Sorority Row, and I know there's a new DVD of this. I'm waiting for whenever they put out a Blu-ray. And this is another one about a bunch of these sorority sisters, and they accidentally kill one of the sorority sisters, and then from that, they all start dying off. This is a newer one that I got. It's from the 80s movie called Humongous, on um, this island. And they basically end up on this island with this giant, and they start dying off. Like I said, there's not too much to say, because, you know, slasher movies, you know, are all people getting killed off and stuff. Of course, Halloween, you got to have that. Um, you know, for Rob Zombie's Halloweens, I didn't dislike them. I liked the beginning of the first Halloween better. Like, I liked the first, like, 40 minutes. After that, I didn't care for it as much. Halloween 2 had elements in it I like. Some of these aren't even open because I saw them in theaters and then never watched them again. I'll probably watch this again at some point. Very violent, the sequel. Hills Have Eyes. Uh, and I guess you would consider this a slasher movie. It's not exactly the same as some of the other ones. But I think I think it is. Um, this somehow, too, this is like the British version. I ended up, when I bought it years back, somehow this is the one they sent, but it plays fine. And, you know, this is the remake... The original one, you know, which is great with Michael Berryman, and the sequel, which is coming out to Blu-ray, I think in like a month or so. And of course, Intruder, Intruder, which just came out, and that's about a bunch of people in a supermarket that's about to go out of business, and they all start getting killed off. This is a really cool one. This is definitely one to check out. Let's see. Just Before Dawn, who's from the director, Jeff Lieberman, who also did Squirm. Really good one. Um... A bunch of people out in the woods getting killed off, kind of like um, Cannibal Camp Out. Killer Party, which is out through the Warner Archives, so it's a burn on demand disc, but it's the only release they have. This is a newer one. I like this too because the one of the stars is the one from Pee Wee's Big Adventure who's like, Fork over the money for lifting it for you, Bucks Ton. 
And I don't know, for some reason I was like, wow, he was in something else. And I, di I didn't realize that. Um, and you know, this is a modern, newer one, laid to rest. I didn't love the sequel, but I really like the first one. I also like, you know, Roach from People Under the Stairs was in this. This is definitely one to check out. You know, it's not perfect, but I like it. And this, I guess you consider this a slasher. Murder set pieces. I know there's an uncut version of this. This is the censored one. This was pretty cool. I really did like the sequences with him, like, walking around Vegas. Those were pretty cool. Um, you know, Drains, not, that's not the main one I'm talking about, but Motel Hell. Which I hope at some point we get a Blu-ray of this. Like I said, too, the music in it is amazing. But it's basically about this um, farmer and his sister who own this motel and they basically catch people who are on the road by the motel and basically put things in the road and stuff to make the car crash they end up burying the people in the backyard and making jerky out of them and that's a really good one my bloody valentine um the original one the remake the remake was okay. I always think of it, too, because it was one of the first movies to use the RED camera, which now everything uses. I, lo I love the quality of the RED camera. Um, but this is definitely a really good one. This is a weird one. Um, Initiation was in a... Um, it was in a mall at night. And Mountaintop Motel Massacre... And these are both out, I think, this is out in this new single release. Uh, I'm not going to rebuy them, they're, they're perfectly fine. But um, this one is this freaky woman that works at a um, motel, and she basically can crawl from room to room with this, like, underground thing. That was, I always thought that was, that was, like, the creepiest aspect of the whole movie. The movie's not amazing, but I love that she can get around by these tunnels underground, and can, they all connect to all the motel rooms, so she can get into any room. And I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, the original Nightmare on Elm Street... I really disliked the um, remake, didn't buy it. I even saw it, you know, at a Blockbuster closing down for $2, and I'm like, no, don't want it. I just, I just didn't like it. Um, the next one, and I know there's a new DVD of this coming out, Popcorn. And this was a cool one about a bunch of these um, kids opening up a, um old movie theater, and they all start dying off. This was a pretty cool one. A lot of people asked me about that one. Um, the next one, see, I'm not going to shit over. Prom Night, the original. Don't watch that remake. Um, I like this. A lot of people say this isn't great. I don't know. I like it. I like also like that Prom Night song in it. And they used a the song in Cabin Fever 2, which I thought was pretty cool. I, I really like Ty West, what Ty West is doing, you know, with the innkeepers and everything. This is one to definitely watch. Rush Week was a really pretty weird one. Shit, I'm dropping things. That one always kind of looked like Reese Witherspoon in the cover. No, not Reese Witherspoon, Rose McGowan. Um, this was a pretty weird one. Um, about people like rushing, like during Rush Week at college getting killed off. Of course, you got to have the, the Sleepaway Camp series. And this is the rare one with the, um, the cross thing on it. This one was like, I think, recalled because they were getting a lawsuit over it. Um, you know, and I like all the sequels. And I really like Return to Sleepaway Camp a lot more than I did at first. When you look at it in a different light, it's really pretty cool. Of course, Scream, not like an all-time favorite to watch, but it really is. It's one of the movies that really brought back slasher films. Now, Sorority Row, um, this was an okay remake. I, I, I liked it. I didn't hate it. Um, another one, you gotta have the, sort you know, Slumber Party Massacre, of course, that's a really good one. Sequels were pretty good, um, Sorority House Massacre, didn't like that one as much. I don't know. I don't know if you would consider this a slasher movie. Now, this is a DVR I got years ago at a convention. None of the horror conventions out here aren't many, but I guess because it's in Hollywood, all of them, if they are don't have, like, bootlegs or DVRs, so you can't find any of these anymore, you know, out here. If I ever go to an East Coast one, I'm going to be loading up on a lot of weird stuff. But, um, Summer Camp Nightmare, that's a pretty cool one about a group of these kids that rebel at this summer camp. And there's some pretty interesting sequences in this one. Um, now, Slashers, this is a weird one about a, um, 
kind of made about reality television shows about a group of people that are getting killed, have to basically survive and, you know, keep from being killed off by these characters. This one I really like. I really like the director's other films, too. Um, Splatter University, a really good one. Um, Stage Fright. This is one that I've had a long time. About to be people that are, like, putting together a, um, you know, a stage, you know, basically like a stage crew getting killed off there. Let's see what else there is. Now, of course, this one's hard to get. Now, this is really out of print. But Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. I regret, too, when I saw years back, the Silent, I used to always see it. The Silent Night, Deadly Night, just the first movie, was just totally out of print, too. And I saw it for cheap as shit, like $10 or something, even less. I didn't get it. I hate when I look at some of the stuff that's out of print and thinking, man, I looked at that so many times and didn't get it. I remember, like, Drop Dead Fred, which I have that. But I remember it used to always be in the $5 bin. And I'm like, man, I should have just bought a whole bunch of them and sold them. And I never really do that, but, you know, it seems like it would have been good to do with that movie. Tourist Trap is good about a bunch of these people that come to this tourist trap on the side of the road with this really freaky guy with all these, like, mannequins. And this is a weird one. Really, really good, though. The Toolbox Murders remake. I couldn't figure out where I put the original one, but the Toolbox Murders remake, for a remake, was good. I'm interested in seeing the, um, there's a sequel to that coming out. Um, of course, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, you know, which is definitely really liked. I like the remake, and the sequel, which I like as much, and, um, with Dennis Hopper, that was really good. Um, and I would say Terra Firma, which I'd say is one of my favorite Lloyd Kaufman movies, got a cover of the button there, um, out of all the Lloyd Kaufman movies, I would definitely say this is my favorite. I, I like, too, that it's about making horror movies and things like that. Because that's what I... Like, my main thing is acting in horror movies. So I really, you know, like... that. This is, like, one of the movies, too, that really got me into the idea of acting. Um, video violence, which I get... You know, isn't to as much slasher film. But it's pretty much is. It's about a group of this town that's basically anyone that comes to the town... They film them and basically rent out to each other copies of them murdering the people. This was a really good one. Another really good shot on video. If you can find this one, definitely get it. It's also in that big box set. Um, what's up there? That The basement set. And Urban Legends. You know, I, I, I liked Urban Legends. Not amazing, but definitely worth watching. I know what you did last summer. I don't own those. They're okay. Visiting Hours, another good one. That's pretty much all that I have. I think I have more, but those are some of the ones that I really would recommend if you're trying to build a Slasher's collection. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know, too, what are some of the other kinds of collection videos you'd like to see me do. Probably going to do them more like this so I can just do it much easier. But anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching, for subscribing, and a new DVD update will be soon. I mean, this is all I've got so far. So it's going to be a little bit. I like to wait till I get it to like, you know, maybe there. Tomorrow a couple things come out though. But anyway though, thanks a lot for watching, for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.